you know, because the quantum is something that I've become aware of the last couple of years because I've been reading Dr. Joe Depenza, you know, and that kind of thing. And I'm thinking, though, that this isn't something that people think about when they think about going to the doctor. You know, you think about getting a prescription or something of that nature. You know, you don't think in these terms. So, so how do you help us shift? How, how can the medical profession help us shift in the way that we're seeing ourselves this way? From an well, energy you might want to ask why a woman who was at five medical school-based hospitals went back to training and got a fellowship, basically, okay. you know, a, a training program in integrative and functional medicine. Because I have been self-training myself. And because, you know, like we can't treat fatigue except in certain ways in standard allopathic medicine. I needed to expand the capacity of my capacity to treat people because often I find what I was doing it with was counseling or something else. But there was not a really a good way for me to really understand all the aspects, just in terms of fatigue. I can't tell you how many women I have treated with fatigue check their adrenals over and over. You can do that in Chinese medicine. You can do it in Ayurvedic medicine. You can do it in a lot of forms of traditional medicine. You can do it in spiritual-based medicine and meditation. But you can't do it in allopathic medicine. They're going to act like it doesn't exist. You know that's a woman's problem. Do you understand now how dogma and culture becomes a pathway of treatment? Mm -hmm. Women are more commonly denied the right and the acknowledgement of their perception of their bodies. And I speak as a survivor of three chronic autoimmune disorders, two of which were rare. Now, do, do you see my color, my shade? We want to add that together? Mm -hmm. And what that meant going to different specialists at different times? Yeah. It's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's so interesting. I wanted to share. Um, I had an experience where I was leading a healing tapping EFT, emotional freedom technique tapping circle with a group of women, and I asked if any someone would like to sh share their issue for the gr with the group, and I would work with them so people would get to tap along and and also gain benefits from watching and participating. And the issue that a woman brought was back pain. And so I remember thinking at the time, just like, okay, right, so we're going to deal with the physical issue, right? Probably, even in my mind, I was thinking, oh, this won't get too deep, right? It'll be everything. Like two or three rounds into, into the tapping, everything, this woman, you know, everything sort of unfolded because it wasn't just about back pain. It was an emotional issue. So I just resonate with that so much. They say the our issues are are in our tissues, literally, right? So when we're not releasing, we're we're holding on to trauma and all that you were saying, and then adding ancestral or generational trauma onto all of that. You know, I love your analogy about like we need a really big spoon, right? Because we are all swimming in this soup. And how is it that we are able to clear this from our bodies to get back to homeostasis, like you said? Yeah. Who measures, who measures, well, Phyllis, did you have something you wanted to say? Well, I just wanted to say that um, one of the things that shows up for me is that you're using, you're looking through a larger lens. Oh, thank um, you. <laughs> and, and as I think about that, if I go to a doctor, don't I want to not think of that doctor not being limited, but looking at all areas of my body, looking at all all about me, the whole person, uh, I have a lot more confidence that, um, that they're going to come up with something that's going to help me. How many times have we gone, as Colette just talked about, a backache, and we know that back pain can come from stress. It can come from so many other things that um, maybe the, the things that we usually come like a, a, a twisted nerve or something like that, a pinch nerve. So the idea of going to someone who's looking beyond what is usual in terms of my health is very comforting to me. You know, just like people are like, there's no such thing as an aura. Well, Curly and did these, this camera work. This is a Russian. Aura, he did this right? camera work yes. about subtle energy and how, mm -hmm. you know, your energy bodies can come out quite a bit. And so you can see all these interpretations. You've got the physical body, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual. You know, you have all these bodies that come out from you. So, and it, 
And so often when people say to me, well, it wasn't what he said. It was just something in the, in the, like when I'm talking, for example, about the impact of what I call the isms in our culture and how it impacts health. I don't care if it's sexism, classism, racism, chickism and get it all gone. You know, um, my experience as a, a physician who was working like on 125th Street in Harlem and, and my old folks were bringing in their young people saying, I don't know why my grandchild's sick. And that's how I became an AIDS physician. And as an AIDS physician, if you want to talk about, that was a war. And not only was it a war, it was a war very specifically that was really truly held not only against you know, same-sex communities or what I would now call gender, non-gendered people, et cetera. And it was also a war against people of color because the war on any chronic severe disease always impacts whoever has the least access to the system. And it's proven that for people of color and for women in general, that we never have an equal access and that ha can and in all the years that I've been in medicine, all 38, the percentage of black physicians has not changed. The percentage of East Asian physicians has tripled. So those are choices made by institutions that change the energy of medicine, the background energy you're walking in, the energy of who's treating you, the energy of who's hearing you. Do you understand now how I'm talking about environment? That is energy. So you can talk about this on just the health sphere, but that's part of health. How are you going to separate out someone's environment from their life? Do you know the level of toxic chemicals in communities of color in this country? And we still don't know all the things those toxins do. Another one, oh, they don't, they don't bother anybody. If they don't bother anybody, keep them in your neighborhood. So then how do you detox? Because there are not a lot of effective studies about what is chronic detoxification. So then you have that going over to integrative and functional medicine, which in many ways in this country, because of the structure of insurance and systems, you know, how much, how much is anybody, how, any insurance companies allowing you to do what you do? Collect. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, all of the okay. clients come to me is it right. It's out of pocket to do the work that they do with me. Is that because... It, it's not measured. I'm just, you know, how, how do we prove that this all exists? There should be better studies, but if you don't put any money toward the studies and you don't understand that you've got to measure just as you quantum physics in different fashions. So some of the instruments just evolve, but it's just like chiropractic was considered, oh, that's who God, none of that's real because it didn't fulfill someone else's dogma which was based on Newtonian medicine. I'm now calling it Newtonian medicine, quantum medicine, and whole medicine. This is an Irish Davis terminology, okay? So I, I think it's important to remember how vast energy medicine is. Like we just talked about tapping. Well, there's therapeutic touch, there's trauma tapping. There's, I, Can we talk about it a little problem. deeper yeah. too, the tapping? No, I, I, let me finish the statement. Okay, I'm coming back. I heard you, in. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> There's laying on of the hands. Now, I don't know how many of you are a human being, but you all look like human beings to me. And I, I want you to tell me what is your usual response to someone in pain. You reach out and you hold them and you touch them. So one of the major studies that looked at integrative and functional medicine techniques and energy medicine said when a doctor sits there and listens to a patient, oh, the thought, and then politely touches their arm or their shoulder, there's a better response. Let's talk about meditation and how that can impact health. Okay, so it's important to learn how to meditate and or pray, because you can meditate in prayer. And it's important, that's why you hear all these chants, whether it's, the, and almost every religious tradition has some chant. We don't always think of it that way, but there's always some repetitive, that you kind of get in your vibe and you hit the theta, the theta waves, because you know you're always having alpha, beta, delta, theta waves. So, and when you hit that particular point, it changes the resonance and other parts of your body. But I also want to talk about the energy in meditation. If you can, if you understand the concept of cause and effect, 
You want to connect to an energy that is about joy, responsibility, compassion, self-love, and then love for others. Because that's what meditation should do. Meditation should lift you up so when you walk out the door, you can recognize the magnificent energy of your soul as you walk through the door. It has, meditation has shown to specifically help multiple chronic illnesses and a great deal of traumatic uh, trauma, multiple psychiatric conditions, anxiety, depression, you can almost name them. You know, the treatment for depression in the 50s was running. Keeping people running and walking. You know, we haven't even talked about grounding, which is like go outside and say hello to a plant. And if you live in a place like New York City, take your little plant you have in the corner over there in that window, talk to it and make it feel good. It'll, it will change your energy. That subtle energy of yours changes because that you change the subtle energy of that other living thing. And when you meditation helps to change your brain, it changes your neurotransmitters, it changes your amygdala, it changes your stress response, it changes the frequency within which you stay in a fear and flight. It changes, oh my gosh, am I, am I, do I look like I'm getting ready to levitate? I can go on about meditation. (laughs) You know something though? We we are, this, this is going to be a two part episode. So but wait, let me say one more thing about meditation. Now, if you want to know about meditation, there are free teaching courses on the web and I want you to go um, to those sites and learn how to meditate. There are multiple ways to get up the mountain, and we want to let you have some of those that you can access immediately if you can access the internet. And we're going to be talking about that part two of this episode. This is the first episode, so I'm encouraging those who are listening to this this episode of Brooklyn Savvy to tune in the following week and hear the second part. So with that, Dr. Iris Davis, thank you so much for being on Brooklyn Savvy. Thank you, Colette Ellis, our wonderful behavioral health coach. And to all the Brooklyn Savvy panelists, we will see you next time on Brooklyn Savvy.